G'day folks, welcome to this week's episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you from the Learn to Paint Academy. Got a great little subject for you this week. Um, a few months ago I was down at Tweed River Gallery on the border of New South Wales and Queensland. And at the back of the gallery, took this fantastic photo. I took a whole lot of photos there, but this one I really like as a composition. So we'll use the more method of painting. Um, for those of you who are new to what we do here, I've taught the more method of painting through the Learn to Paint Academy to more than 30,000 students around the world. It's all about simplifying things right down so that we uh, have three steps, three colors, and three brushes. It makes it really easy for anybody to get started painting. Okay, so I've got up here an 11 by 14 inch board. And it's, it's, the orientation of this board is a little bit different from the photo reference. So we're going to have to make some edits to our photo reference as we go. Just compress everything in a little bit, but we're going to need to do that in the right way. So let's just get some water and we'll get some ultramarine blue, a little bit of lizard and crimson. I like to mix those two together and make it dark. Okay, nice and easy. And then we'll take some more water. I want to have this paint as thin as possible. So if you're using oils, water mixable oil or acrylic, it doesn't matter. We want this initial paint we use for drawing to be very loose paint, right? So it's going to be like uh, an ink-like consistency rather than thick paint, okay? So then we come in here and say, okay, what's our first big shape? Well, we said it's that foreground embankment, which is sort of running through there, okay? And we've got a big tree sitting on that foreground embankment and it's a dominant shape, you know, from a compositional point of view. This is a dominant shape within um, the overall painting here, right? So we're going to paint that as one big shape. Now, within that, there's branches, there's sky holes and things like that. That's all good and well. Don't worry about it for now. We just want to identify and locate those big shapes, okay? Now, I said we're going to compress this in a little bit. So that big tree shape is sort of taking up one third at least. So we're going to have to make some edits here, uh, so which is perfectly fine. Um, I don't mind doing that occasionally. So this is our water mass that's running. Actually, that's probably that's a little bit too high. So we'll just run it to about there, and then we'll run it through there. So that's our little lake there. Okay. Don't make that go up too high because if we are compressing it in, then that will cause us problems. And then, so we've got big shape number one, okay, here and here. Consider that all big shape number one. That's big shape number two. Then we're going to come in here with this little hillside in the uh, background here, okay. That's big shape number three. And there's different trees and things in there. I know that. We'll get to those, okay. Uh, and then we've got a little mountain range that's sort of running out the back there, like so. And there's a little, uh, little farmhouse there, which we'll get to. Okay, so that's big shape number three is that one there. Big shape four is that distant. And then big shape five is the sky. The sky virtually paints itself. All right, how easy is that? That's step one of the more method of painting. It's about getting the right shapes in the right place and then standing back and going, okay, is that going to make a pleasing composition? Because clearly I pushed it all in that way by comparison with the photo because I didn't have a board the same shape as the photo. The, the, you know, the photo is more rectangular, or more landscape. I'm having to put it into more of a squared off format. So I'm making some edits to the photo, right? Okay. We now need to get in and block in color here. Okay. So I'm going to treat this big shape here, the tree and this foreground, all with the one dark. And it's going to be our darkest dark. And then everything beyond that is going to be a lighter, cooler value. So I'll take my big crusty brush. See that one that's all crusty like that? I'll take that with some water. I'll get some more blue paint in here. Okay, I'll get some of this loser and crimson. That'll make it go dark straight away. But it's a little bit on the purple side, so I'll get some yellow ochre. We'll push that in and that'll start to then give us more of a dark gray uh, heading towards black. Okay. We won't get to a perfect black, but we don't really want a perfect black either. So you can see there's a nice juicy dark, and this will be our darkest part of the painting, okay? And we want to keep this paint fairly thin again, so we can come in and paint over it later. So a bit more water, and then we come up to the canvas here, 
and let's just start laying that in. That's going to come fairly thin on the uh, board here. So when we get to our next step, we're going to have to thicken this paint up a little. But that's okay. Okay, make some interesting shapes. Don't have just like a rounded tree. You're going to need to get some interesting shapes and edges in there. Okay, so that's going to make for an interesting tree when we are working on a bit more. So what we're really doing here is we're really just painting in the shadow side of these elements. Okay, it's the element in shadow is what we're working on here. So um, don't be too concerned about making this just perfect because everything's going to be painted over. All right, now the next logical place for us to work on is going to be blocking in uh, big shape number three here. Okay, and um, if you look at that big shape, there's let's just bring it up on the screen for you that distant or the middle distant hillside there. It's partly grass field area, and it's partly the trees, the darker value of the trees, right? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out that darker value of the tree. And I'm going to block that whole area in with that darker value of the tree. And then to create the tree shapes, when we come into step three, we're going to use that lighter value of the grass just to cut around those trees. Okay, just for something a little bit different. Okay, so that means that's going to need to be a little bit cooler, so a little bit bluer, less yellow in there. And it's going to be a lighter value, so I need to get some white into that. But I don't want it to be purple, so we'll get a little bit more yellow in there. Push it towards the grey. A bit more blue. Okay, and when I put this colour down, there should be a definite shift in uh, the tone. Even though this isn't, we need to work on strengthening up this paint here. When I put that down, it needs to be a definite shift. Now that's not that's not definite enough for my liking. So I'm going to go in with more white. Oh, that's a lot of white. A bit more blue. Okay, I need to get a bit more blue into that. And how's that going to look next to this? It's almost there. Maybe just a tiniest little bit of white. I'm going to creep up on that white. Get a little bit more blue in there. And I think that will probably work. See, now I'm just doing little test marks. And I think that's probably close to the tone we want. So I'm just going to grab a bit of paper towel. And just pull out that darker mark there. And then that one. Just pull the paint out. Just so it's not shining through. And now we can start to block in this distant hillside with this value and you can see automatically that it's a definite jump between that one and this one here so I'm happy with that. Now there's a few little trees that are poking up there so I'll pop those in just small don't worry about that house at the moment but there's a few little trees along there as well down to that lake. I'm also going to just pull some of those, that shadow tone for the trees into the water there. Okay, to create the reflection of that water. Just in through there. Always paint your reflections in a downward motion. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to come to that little mountain behind. So I'm going to take a separate small brush, a little bit of water, get some of this blue in here. Okay, and we'll just lighten that off again. So it wants to be a lighter value and a cooler value, but also introducing some of that shadow tone from the step we've just done. So there's a connection there. 
Okay, that's a bluey grey is what we've got. I think that'll work. Uh, let's just run that in here. We can adjust this in the next step as well if it's not quite right. Work around those little tree tops there that we popped in. Now there's not much happening in the sky, so I'll just paint it as a pretty, um, pretty much a gradient. So I'll take that blue there, I'll take a big chunk of the white, put it next to it, mix it in, progressively lighten that paint. Okay, a touch more. Rather than putting a whole lot of white in there in one hit and then going, oh my gosh, what have I done? There we go. And so, you know, I've loaded the brush up. There's plenty of paint on the brush, and let's not muck around. That's why I suggest use a big brush. Um, let's just get that paint down. Just be careful, you've got wet paint there. Okay, so you've just got to be careful you don't clip into that wet paint. If I leave a couple of little white patches, that's fine because we can cover those over with our, um, when we put our highlights and mid tones on there. Okay. Now we need to lighten that off, that tone there. Okay. Get a little bit lighter again. You can see I'm using plenty of paint in here. The reason why I've got a little bit lighter again, it needs to be lighter than that mountain. Okay, now you might be tempted to get a smaller brush just to get around here, but don't. Just persist with the big brush, because the problem with a small brush is you try and get down into little finicky brush marks. You don't really have much choice, do you, with a small brush? But to keep the painting fresh, it's a good idea to go with big bold marks, big shapes, big bold brush marks in the early stages of your painting. Well there you go folks, we've successfully blocked in. Now if you're just watching us for the first time you might be concerned about what on earth we're doing here but stick with us, we're going to do step three. What I need to do now is allow this to fully dry. Now being acrylic paint, you're best to let it to dry off fully. Uh, if it's water mixable oils or oil paint, you want it to tack off a little bit so it does need a little bit of drying time and then it'll be much better to come and work back into this later on. So um, this is going to come up to be a really nice little painting, you just wait and see. Uh, so we're going to go and take a half an hour to an hour break and we'll come back and we'll, um, we'll do step three shortly and uh, we'll pull this painting together. And step three we go into our middle tones, our highlights, details and finishing touches and pull this painting together and you'll be amazed at how quickly it'll start to come together as a nice little painting. So um, I'll see you after a short break in step three. Okay folks, welcome back to this episode of Learn to Paint TV. Now I've let this go for a few days, had a bit of a bushfire evacuation emergency, <laughs> interrupted our filming but we're back now and um, about to do step three of the more method of painting. So this is a time where we slow down and we now bring this painting to life and we put our middle values and our highlight tones and a few details. Not a lot of details, but just enough. And um, as you know, we're putting our darks to establish our value pattern. It's all fully dry, so we're now set to take this painting to the next step. So let's get down to the palette and get underway. Okay, so I've just refreshed my paint. Same paint as we had before. Um, I think I've used a slightly different yellow, but it's still basically a light yellow. Um, and we're not going to use a tiny little bit of that anyway. So what I thought we would do is perhaps work on this main tree and get our mid-tones in. I'm going to put some highlights up around this area here, in through here. So for the moment, we want really more of a mid-tone. It's a well-used brush. You can see if I had to put it back together. I'm going to use this brush because... I want to get some interesting little um, leaf type shapes and these hairs sticking out are ideal for that. So what we will do is we'll take this blue and we need to get a middle ground, uh, a middle tone green. So I'll take some of the blue, a little bit of the yellow ochre, okay, tiny pinhead of the red, and we'll just 
build up a little bit more paint there. So it needs to be on the green side. We don't put any of the booster color in just yet because we want to uh, save that for our highlight tones here. Okay. And I'll just scoop up that paint like so. And we come over onto the canvas here. Now we need to preserve our darks as much as possible. So we're gonna work in this top area up here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scrub that on and try and do it a little bit randomly so that we leave some of that dark underneath. Now the dark probably needs to be strengthened up, um, which we can do once we get our mid-tones and so on on. Okay. But try and create some interesting shapes. See how they, I've got this, um, you know, it's not a blocky shape. It's kind of, I'm using the edges of the brush just to let the hairs make, make the leaves, basically, in the branches and so on. Okay, so we just scrub it in. That section there was a bit blocky from the blocking, but I just work over it with the highlight there. Okay, now I'm going to come down to around about here. I'm going to pop another tree, a darker one, which actually sits in the background now. So let me just mix that up. So there's our blue, a little touch of the red into that one, and the yellow ochre. Let's see what we've got. Okay, a bit more of that. A bit more of the blue. Okay, so this one is just sitting in behind this tree. So what I'll do is I'll just add that in. Don't make it too big, but it's sitting there. And then we'll put the lighter color um, branches of uh, trunk, tree trunk of this foreground tree over the top of that. Okay, so we'll just put it in there as an indication. Distant hill over here. So I'll just go to a slightly different brush. Now for that distant hill, I'm going to start off with our yellow ochre. Um, we're going to be keeping this all in pretty much the same family of colors because we're using a limited palette here, right? So we'll get a little bit of blue into that because it's, mo it's more of a yellow green if you have a close look at that hill there. Okay. And then we'll add a bit of red into that. Now you can see I added more red into there than I needed to. So I'll just add a bit more yellow, a little bit more blue. Okay. And now because this is in the distance, we need to reduce the value. It can't be the same value as that main tree. So therefore we take some of the white, not too much, and we creep up on it. Okay, go like that, and that's getting there kind of. Need to be a little bit bluer. Okay. And difficult to tell on the palette here, but you can see that there's a very big difference between here and these two tree tones here. Okay, that's important that you can recognize that. Um, I'm gonna take just a tiny little bit of this booster yellow. There we go, that's probably getting closer to what we want but I think it's probably lighter still. Now, again, I'm not gonna be able to tell if I've got this right until I actually do a test color. So I'll come up here and I'll go next to our other tones here and I'll go, is that gonna look light enough? Now, when that dries, probably not. So I'll get a little touch more white into that. There we go, I think that's probably getting closer. So we need to go just slightly lighter than what we think we need. Okay, do another little test. You just slightly lighter because we know it's acrylics and it's going to just dry um, a bit darker. So therefore we have to make allowances. Now I've, I've got a few little tree shapes here. So what I want to do, it's important I don't paint over those. I'm going to paint around them and I'm going to use this paint of the grass color to start to shape up these little trees here. Okay. They're all sitting up above the hill, so it's not such a problem. Uh, and then we're going to have a row of trees in through there. So it's going to look something like, like this. Okay, so I'm just establishing where are those little distant trees going to go. And they're going to sit somewhere in there like that, I suspect. So what that means is I can now come in here with this tone and just work around those, okay? Now, as I apply, notice I'm going to hold the brush at the end here like that. I'm going to use it on a um, horizontal, and I'm just going to make marks. But I'm, I'm going to be mindful of trying to leave in just some of that underpaint. See, there's a few little specks coming through there. I'll run that one down that way. And why am I doing that? Well, primarily because 
having some of that shadow come through will just give the whole thing a bit more form, won't it? And some interest and some depth in there. Okay. Come back here and I'll reload the brush. Now this looks very different up on the board compared to what's on the palette. And that's why you've always got to come up and do a little test mark. Don't overcommit yourself to it. Mix up a color, test it, and then you can uh, decide whether you want to pursue it or not. Okay, we'll run a little row of trees there. And there we go. Okay, now I'm going to use this tone here also for along the edges of this um, water here. There's a similar tone there, so we might as well use it to our advantage. Just got to find the right spot for it. It's going to be around about there. And that runs into around about there. So all the shaded areas, therefore, are our tree shapes, which we'll come back to those. Okay. What we should do now, though, is come in here to this hillside here and just get some tone there because now we know we've got this mix on the palette here what we know now is that okay we can come warmer with our yellows and reds get our booster yellow into there it's too much red but that's okay just mix it out to the side there okay so we've got a nice little mix of the yellows and reds okay we'll take a little bit of blue get some green happening so see i've got a variety of little tones there uh, which we can use all of those in our foreground grasses. Okay, so I'm going to take another big brush because it's a big area we need to cover. So I'll take this one here, okay, and I'll start off with some of these greens, just load up the tip of them there, okay, and let's just come in here and just start to work some of those up. Get a bit of variety in there. Because it's in the foreground, so a bit of interest with the different tones will definitely make for a more appealing painting. Okay. Come in here and get some bigger marks. But again, you know, that shadow tone is there for a reason, so don't paint it completely out. And you can probably see that the, um, because I'm using that trend, more of a transparent um, green, oh, sorry, the booster color, the yellow, the cadmium yellow, that uh, the whole mix is fairly transparent because your ultramarine blue and uh, and the permanent lizard and crimson are both transparent colors. So now I've got three transparent colors in there. No white, white would be opaque, right? So there's no white in there. So just all these colors are opaque, which means that that dark is gonna pop through here and there. Okay, so now we've got a bit of grass work happening in this field, and I think we're going pretty good. So, just give the brush a swish. I'm going to go back now. And I'm going to just work back into some of those distant trees. Um, just with some darker green tones. So get some of those. And a lot of these in the background here, they don't really have any um, highlight on them. So we'll just paint them in as a dark. Just little indications, aren't they? You're not, not going to really see much definition in these trees here. On there. Okay. And then we, as we come into these trees here, I'll use the same tone for the moment. Um, however, we're probably going to put a few little highlights here and there on some of these. I suspect. Another one in there. 
And then with that tone, what we'll do is get it slightly darker, not too much darker, but slightly. And uh, let's just run that in here. Well, that's a little bit on the ready side. I'll take some of this tone here. And let's just re-establish the uh, reflections there. What I put in there previously a little bit th on the thin side and also probably wants to be a bit greener as we've done just now okay we'll pop those in and that would then be a good time for us to strengthen up that water there so let's get a little bit of the blue a little touch of the white um, go a little touch bluer the, the water tone is going to probably be slightly darker than what it's going, the sky color is going to be. It's a reflection of the sky, but it's probably going to be a little touch darker. Okay, so we'll just paint up to what we've done there. And then we'll just soften in the edges there like so. I kind of feel that we need one on the, one. Of, there's, there are trees up on the hill here, which I've not put in but I'm just going to pop in a couple of them just to sort of connect that top area there back down to the trees there so if you're using oils then you'd use uh, less medium at this point okay let's test that that's pretty close so let's just get this on now you want to put this paint on thick and get some nice interesting brush marks in there and part of the reason why I want to put it on thick is we don't want this drying too quickly because I want to come in and put some fluffy clouds into it um, and uh, and also get the edges of this tree the large tree here looking a bit more um, softer into this wet sky here so let's paint that out it's going to be lighter down the bottom so let's get more of that white into that mix okay i've got too much pure white there so let's mix back into that blue i actually don't mind some of that it's giving it a bit of atmosphere and just leave it like that for a bit of clouds eh? just get a little touch more white and just work that in a little bit more I'm not going to paint big fluffy clouds I just want a little indication because you know this is not a painting about clouds so therefore we don't want to um, overwork clouds in the sky it'll just command the attention of the eye too much so now what we're going to do is I'm going to come in and put some more highlight tone onto this main tree and then we'll put in some details, tree branches and so on. So let's get some white, get some of this booster yellow. Cadmium yellow light would be perfect. Get some yellow ochre in there. And a little touch of blue. Now the key with this, when you come, when you get to this point with the highlights, the key is not to have your brush loaded up with too much paint there. See, I've got all this paint there. That's potentially going to end up in the painting if I'm not careful, right? So I'll pull it out through the paper towel. And I just want to load just the tip. And I've just loaded those hairs on the tip there. And we'll come over here and go, okay, if the light's coming from this direction through the painting, then that means this upper edge here is where it's going to have the most highlighted... Um, branches and so on. So we'll just highlight those. Okay, 
Now, as I put that down, I'm kind of thinking, I'm not really thrilled about the green middle value. It's not a great green, I don't think. So I'll just get, I probably put too much red into it previously. I'll just get a slightly more interesting mid-tone green there. Then I'll come back with this lighter, warmer value. So then we can go a little bit brighter with this and it sort of makes a bit more sense. But I don't want it to be too bright and dominate the painting too much. So I have to balance. So I've just got a couple of script liner brushes. I've got a very thin one. I've got one slightly thicker for doing the trunk. So I'll just get a little bit of that happening. Some of this white, a little pinhead of the red, get a bit of that yellow ochre. So I'm just looking at that trunk and it's pretty much a light gray. Okay. So it probably wants a little bit more oomph than that. Possibly something like that. Let's just give that a try. Again, it's all about testing. Light up the tip of that brush. And the main trunk sort of goes in through here. Into there. There's another one that sort of sits in there. We've got Is there and there and then I'll swap over to my little brush just so I've got a little bit more control I think this tone overall is working so let us just not everywhere try and pick out some gaps in these trees Here and there. Okay. Now, looking at the photo, the one thing that the photo has that, well, actually, there's a couple of things. Let me just get in a dark, so a blue and a red. Okay. Mix that together. Because there is just a little bit of shadow here and there. Like around about there. On some of these trunks. They're not all in light. Okay, just make sure it's not too heavy like that. Smudge it in if you need to. See if we can't pick out a few spots in here where the sky might be showing through. Just a few little random sky holes like so. Perhaps down along the line there so again I can just soften that in here and there and if it looks too pasted on which you can often do if you 
especially when you first try to put sky holes on if it looks a little bit too pasted on then what you need to do is just get a little bit of that darker green tone um, so this tone here and just pop a little bit of over the sky hole Because you think about it, there would be some leaves blowing over it, and that just makes them sit back a little bit, doesn't it? Have a look at that. Let's just try some of this in here. Um, I've got to be careful, I don't let it get too blocky. But you definitely want to have some of these brighter grasses along here. Now I've gone and sort of done it a bit rough like that because I'm going to smudge it in a bit more. Um, well in fact, actually, if I left it like that, it probably would work just like that because it is fairly translucent, this mix. Now if you're using cadmium yellow light, you're probably not going to have it as translucent. So just make the necessary adjustments. Um, Okay, there's a few spots there I'll just soften off with my finger brush. That's drying really quickly. It's, the day's starting to warm up here, so I've got to be mindful of the pace I'm working at. Let's just let that settle down, and while that's settling down, we shall get a bluey white mix, a whitey grey mix. Here. I'm just going to go and pop this homestead right there. Kaboom. Like that. Actually, there's a couple of others, but I'll get a slightly bluer, slightly grayer version. There's another one up in here. Don't want that one to pop out as much, though. Clean that off, get a little touch of this red. Okay, so this is a, if you look at Color Harmony, this overall painting scheme here is um, blue and yellow, right? So a little touch of red somewhere, like on the root there. We'll just add a little tiny little touch of interest to it. Actually, a few more tree trunks. So let's just get um, let's get that little mark there. Come in here. Always fun to paint. Just a greeny mix. Bluey green, like so. Okay, I need my little script liner brush like that. If this was a bigger canvas, I'd probably use a palette knife to do this, but uh, I think it makes sense to just use a little brush like so. And you keep them in little clusters, paint them horizontally, keep them in little clusters like this. smaller as I get further away of course. And where I've got some of those over the blue, they're not showing up as much, so I'll just get a more of a yellow tone in there. And then they show up a whole lot better, don't they? Don't put it onto all of them. But just pick out a few. There's just a couple of little shadow spots here, which um, I think 
mixing with that green just a couple of these little shadows will um, add a little something to the painting for instance I don't this tree here Probably the wrong tone of shadow there at the moment, but I still think it's worth popping it in. Just give a little indication of um, where the light's moving. And it's turned out to be not a bad little pony. I'll just sign it, pop it on eBay. Pretty simple, easy little painting, one that you want to have a go at. Well, there you go, folks. I think we've come up with a reasonably close approximation of our subject um, here, which is a little lake down near uh, the Tweed River Gallery. Fun little painting. Um, it's, it's an interesting one because they've got lots of greens in here and, and just understanding the values and how you move between your values to create depth and everything in the painting. Um, it's a good learning exercise, so I really hope you have a go at this one uh, and that you enjoy it as much as what I've enjoyed bringing it to you today. I'm reasonably happy with the overall outcome. I might have a go at this one in oils as well, just to compare the difference, but um, play around, whatever your favourite medium is, and uh, have a go at this one. Hope you've enjoyed this episode. Now, if it's your first time watching us, or if you haven't yet registered for the free course that we have at Learn to Paint Academy, then I'll pop the web address up on the screen here. So please go to the Learn to Paint Academy, look for the section where it says uh, free course and uh, register for that because then we'll talk, teach you more about the more method of painting. There's four different painting demonstrations there and you can join our Facebook community from there and, um, and really immerse yourself in what we're doing. And uh, see you next week on Learn to Paint TV. Happy painting till then. Cheers.